Welcome inside Colonial Life Arena. Courtney Lyle alongside Carolyn Peck. And wow, these are two really talented teams. Some of the best teams in the SEC are playing in this game tonight. I think Coach made an excellent point. This is a time you've got to legitimize yourself. Now, there are four teams, I think, that could win the SEC title, and these two, I think, are contenders. And that's saying a lot about South Carolina when they are led by a group of talented freshmen, and you're talking about them contending for an SEC title. We've got the number one recruiting class and three of those players in the starting lineup. You have a dominant post inside in Aaliyah Boston, who I think could be a candidate for freshman of the year. And then on the perimeter, Zaya Cook. And we're going to see Bree Bill see her defensive skills tonight as she takes on Ryan Howard. Well, if you haven't seen Aaliyah Boston play, Aaliyah Boston play yet, it is impressive. The number three recruit in the 2019 class. Well, she uses her body and her size so well. She positions herself early. That's when the big girls need to do their work. That makes scoring a heck of a lot easier. She's putting up numbers that could have her as freshman of the year. Guess what? We have the reigning national freshman of the year in this game. It's Ryan Howard who literally can play any position. Get your pop, get your popcorn, because you're going to want to watch Ryan Howard play. She can score at all three different levels, going to the rim, mid-range, shoot the three. She's got a little razzle-dazzle about her game. This sophomore is super and fun to watch. The reigning national freshman of the year leads Kentucky with almost 21 points per game. And here we go. You heard Steffi and Coach Landers talk about it. South Carolina is going to have to slow down that talent of Ryan Howard. Well, and Kentucky is going to have to try to force turnovers in South Carolina because of the length. See, inside, you've got Bill who can post you up. South Carolina has the height advantage over Kentucky, especially on the glass. Ryan Howard wears number 10 in the black jersey. Jada Roper, number 32 at the point. where Howard goes. They will move her all over the floor. Five, four seconds on the shot clock. Roper, a little floater. Kiki McKinney gets the rebound. New life for Kentucky. Matthew Mitchell told us if they can rebound or stay close in the rebounding with South Carolina, but they can't afford to do this, turn the ball over. Ball given up on the other end. Shot goes up, Bree Beal is fouled, and she'll go to the line. One of those freshmen we've been talking about. First foul on Kiki McKinney. The dynamic of the South Carolina team is so interesting because you have that number one recruiting class, the freshmen who are contributing, but then you have the veterans like Ty Harris who can run the offense and Kiki Herbert Harrigan who can be dominant down low and step out and shoot. I think the two seniors for South Carolina have really come into their own. Ty Harris, throughout her four years, has really never been challenged. Her freshman year, she was given the keys to the bus, and nobody's really nipped at her heels. Well, now you had Desi Henderson coming in. You've got Zia Cook, and this is an opportunity now where she has sharpened her leadership skills along with Kiki Herbert Harrington. It's been so nice for Don Staley to have those leaders for this big freshman class who wants to be led. That's the key. Howard thought about the three. Yes, here it goes. A little too much. Rebound and the putback is no good. McKinney pulls it back out, a fresh 20 seconds. Sabrina Hayes. Kentucky's crashing the offensive boards. And Don Staley's not happy. She has not moved. She's like a statue sitting over there trying to contain her frustrations because Kentucky has gotten time, chance after chance on the glass. Four offensive rebounds so far. No points for the Cats, though. It's dumped out, and there's an offensive foul. Staley in her 12th season, she was so positive talking to us about this group. I mean, she really likes the players she has. Everything that she has said, even when she's got to make corrections, she's done it in a positive form. This is really the first frustration that I've seen. But we talked, we were at practice yesterday. Don talked to her team about Kentucky's ability to take the charge, to draw the offensive foul. She called each one of the officials' names. She said, Tyna Napier, boop. And then Jalika <laughs> suffered, boop. 
Well, she eats one of them and demonstrated yes. the call. And there it's already proven true with Sabrina Haynes stepping up and taking the charge. There's Aaliyah Boston, the number three recruit in this top recruiting class for South Carolina. Number three overall. Seven seconds on the shot clock inside to Boston. She's got Ryan Howard on her and gets Howard to foul her. She just does such a nice job of really positioning herself. And this is a freshman that never stops talking. She uses her, her vocal skills as well as her basketball skills, always talking about where the ball is or where someone needs to be. And we even saw that yesterday when she was not in the drill. She was yelling out, who's on this player? Who's over here? Like, she's always communicating. That can be hard for a freshman. But when you have a freshman that has the confidence, a lot of times freshmen don't talk because they're afraid they'll be wrong. Look at Zaya Cook, an explosive player. Got the steal, couldn't finish. Cook to inbound. There's a pass inside to Boston. Pretty move. So now Ryan Howard's going to bring it up the floor and turns it over. Ty Harris all by herself. And Kentucky's got to call timeout. Six zero run for Carolina. Let's see how Kentucky adjusts to this defense. Ryan Howard turns it over for a second time. Beal up off the window. Freshman making it happen. 8-0 run for Carolina. Just the hustle play, the second effort. And then Cook, unselfish play. A given the dish to Beal so she can get the layup. Seven points off of turnovers for South Carolina already. Four minutes in. I was wondering, and Coach talked about legitimizing yourself. There's Ryan Howard. But see, Kentucky has only played, they played Louisville, they played Cal. Those are the only two Power Five teams that they played so far in their system. Now against Louisville, they showed that they can they can compete. But night in, night out, pretty much in the pre-conference or the non-conference season, South Carolina has been challenged. And they've been one of the most challenged teams in the SEC, just looking at who they've played. Remember, this team has a win over Baylor, who was number two at the time. Exactly. Then they beat Maryland. They also knocked off Duke. Carolina three and one against ranked opponents this season. Aaliyah Boston says no. Shot clock going off. Wow, Ryan Howard at the buzzer. They're going to take a look at it and make sure she got the shot off in time. She has scored all of Kentucky's points. The rest of Kentucky's starting five have looked a little rattled. And it's been Ryan Howard that is now looking at this game and going, listen, I, I got to step up. I've got to set the tone because they are struggling offensively. Again, they're looking at the monitor to see if she got the shot off before the shot clock. And yeah, left her hand, there was still one left so this three should count and that would give Ryan Howard eight points all of Kentucky's eight points well she averages almost 21 points a game the next person of one of her teammates is 11 so the majority she's taken over 100 more shots 
than anybody else on her team. She is definitely that go-to person. Looks pretty clear on the monitor. The shot should count. It does. They could have just asked you to start with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave it to them. Yeah, all of Kentucky's points have come from the reigning National Freshman of the Year, Ryan Howard. I'm telling you, she is, she's a, she's a tough guard because she can score in so many different ways. Tatiana White and Blair Green down low now for Kentucky. Zaya Cook, what a pass! Whew. She doesn't need a look, she knows where Boston is. And it's gonna be an offensive foul on Kentucky. The patience against the zone. And Leah Boston just flashing into that soft spot near that free throw elbow area, and then has the ability to hit that face up jumper. Zaya Cook has three assists. Kiki Herbert Harrigan at the SEC logo. South Carolina is seven of eight from the field. They're going to get Aaliyah Boston. Her first foul. Blair Green down low. Ty Harris comes out running. Cook a little soft. And it's back the other way, Chastity Patterson. Patterson hustling for it in a bunch of traffic. This is just Chastity Patterson's second game. Was just eligible at the end of December after transferring from Texas middle of last season. First game back was against Cal. First shot she made, three. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the court, Chastity Patterson. She's a shooter. Yeah, ideally, Matthew Mitchell was telling us he would really like to split the point guard duties between Chastity Patterson and Jada Roper, but this is only her second game of the season. Well, they need that, though, so that Ryan Howard doesn't have to start the offense, that she can, you can run her off screen. She can be that first option to catch and score. Ty Harris underneath with a hand in her face. Boston will help her out. Will it drop? It does. A little drama. I've watched Aaliyah Boston. She's posted up. She scored. She's flashed. She showed her face-up game. She's flashed to the top, and now she's showing her assist ability. She just does so many good things for this South Carolina offense. There's another steal for the Gamecocks. Bree Beal with the extra effort. Ryan Howard blocks her. Well, Saturday, the men go back to back to begin conference play on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number 17, Kentucky host Missouri at Rupp Arena. That's at 2 p.m., followed by Auburn and Mississippi State. Zaya Cook getting her points, getting her assists, a little bit of everything for that freshman. Second chance for Kentucky. Chastity Patterson will set things up. But Courtney, there's a lot of contact going to the rim that's not being called. 
Welcome to the physicality of the SEC. And bring your A game. Be ready physically and mentally to play in this tough conference. Put your mouth guard in, yep. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda Pascal on the foul, her first, number 12 in black. So we're going to see Destiny Henderson and Lily Grissett. Number 24 in white has been so impressive over the last two games. Her first season playing full time at the guard position for Dawn Staley. It was a collective decision for Lily to move out, play on the perimeter. There were stipulations for her to be able to do that. One was that she was going to have to put in the work. She was going to have to change her diet, get herself in great shape, and commit to it. And it, you had, can see that it's definitely paid off. And Dawn talked about how she has done all of the physical part. Now it's the mental aspect. As a post player, she talked about you can really have time to survey and evaluate. you got to think quicker in that guard spot. Now Lily's picking that up. She's averaging over 14 points per game over the last two games for Carolina. Nine seconds on the shot clock for the Cats. Sabrina Haynes rolls out, gets her own rebound. Offensive rebounds are plenty, now seven for Kentucky. Out of bounds off of Kentucky. That's four turnovers for Ryan Howard. Well, the thing that South Carolina is trying to do is take away Ryan Howard's right hand, force her left, because the majority of her scoring is going to the right. If you can force her to the left, you're going to make her either turn the ball over or make her a passer. Ty Harris with the step back. Oh, that's nice. Whew. Coach Staley wants her to look for her shot more. That was a good one. She said that that's been the most aggravating thing. She does everything else right. She's just too unselfish. And this year, Dawn has really challenged her to be a little more selfish and to be a little more aggressive offensively looking for hers. Ty Harris, as a freshman point guard, helped the South Carolina program win a national championship. Wouldn't it be nice to bookend that on her career with another one? You know, you talked about South Carolina had knocked off Baylor over the Thanksgiving uh, break, and that gave this team a lot of confidence. It was like, well, you know what? Maybe this is a year that we could go back and repeat. Offensive foul. Ryan Howard stepped up and took the charge. Second charge Kentucky's taken tonight. Foul again will go against Ty Harris. Just her first, but she'll come out for the final 7.2 seconds of this quarter. Zaya Cook back in. Howard to the races. A deep three goes up and won't go in. South Carolina putting the pressure on Kentucky in this first quarter. Well, South Carolina getting great leadership from Ty Harris, trying to put the Wildcats away early. South Carolina with a 12 point lead over Kentucky. And it's been all about the babies. This number one recruiting class of freshmen for South Carolina have been getting it done. It's been still score. It's been sharing the basketball. It's been looking for offensive opportunities. And Courtney, the majority of the work that's been done has been done by these babies. Hey, they are fearless freshmen. First SEC game. No big deal. They've combined for 18 points in the first quarter, five assists and five steals. Don Staley's got to like that from her, her babies. Oh, for <laughs> it being the first game of the SEC opener, 
and these young bucks come on and they show no fear. Look, they're like a fight, like a, a worn in house shoes. They're very yeah. comfortable <laughs> in the SEC. There's no breaking in that needs to be done. <laughs> First 10 minutes, pretty solid for South Carolina and its number one recruiting class. Kentucky, on the other hand, eight turnovers for the Cats in the opening 10 minutes. The thing that Kentucky needs to do is they need to calm down and use South Carolina's aggressiveness against them. Spread the floor, look for some backdoor opportunities or to drive and pitch. Brian Howard has eight of Kentucky's 12 points and you can add two more to that. She's going to the line. First foul called on Lily Grissett. Do you watch every time Howard goes to the right, she's going to draw a lot of attention. She's going to be the most popular kid in class because everybody is going to try to make her go to the left side of the floor. Zaya Cook. A little bit short. It went off of Kentucky. It'll stay with South Carolina. You know, I talked to, to Don about how mature these freshmen were coming in. And she said a lot of it has to do with the coaching that they've received and especially the experience of playing USA basketball. What vision from Destiny Henderson to find Lily Grissett. Kiki McKinney will take the three. Grissett with the rebound. Henderson loses it, but it'll stay with Carolina. Destiny Henderson, another very viable option at the point guard position, just a sophomore, but Don Stanley told us this year she's really understanding what they want her to do. Last year, you come in as a freshman, you're trying to figure out the speed of the game, the system. Now she knows, and it's just been a benefit. Well, and she was even in the starting lineup as a freshman last year. And to have, have the ability to accept the role that you're not starting, but she's playing about 10 more minutes a game because she runs this, I don't want to call them the second crew, they're just the next crew that comes in because Don Staley talks about her as being the sixth starter. Looking for Victoria Saxton down low. Ami here puts up a shot in the corner. Howard's drawing two. Saxon will back off. And Ami here draws her first foul. At the beginning of the season, it seemed like every time a player touched another player, it was a foul. Now that it's in conference play, it just seems like now, I don't know, because it's SEC, it's physical, and these fans have not adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> Back out to Patterson, rims out. Henderson's got a couple of options, and it's a blocking foul called on Sabrina Haynes. Kentucky's already taken two charges tonight, but won't get the call there. Henderson, a member of the SEC All-Freshman team last year. She's a McDonald's All-American. They're all over the South Carolina roster. Is 
66% free throw shooter this season. I think if there's one area, the free throw shooting for South Carolina, as a team, they're shooting 66%. You gotta at least be in the 70s, 72% especially as often as they get to the free throw line. They're swarming Ryan Howard, and she stepped out of bounds. That's some tough South Carolina defense. Well, and the benefit of having Lily Grissett at 6'1", or 6'2", then you have Leticia Emmer here switching off or coming out to trap. That's a big trap especially when you have four high hands. Well, it's nice, too. South Carolina can use their depth against Howard to rotate in. We saw Brie Beal start on her defensively, and then you bring in Lily Grissett while Howard's playing the whole time. And that's the thing Kentucky tries to do is wear their opponents down. That's what South Carolina can do with their depth. Largest lead for the Gamecocks here. Kentucky all kinds of trouble. Howard got open. 13 now for Ryan Howard. She's one of only two Kentucky players who have scored tonight. It's a freshman field day. <laughs> Tatiana Wyatt trying to work on Brie Beal. No way. Ami here leading the break and finishing. Come on, we know she can dunk. I think we have a fit. We have tape of that. Yeah. Was she the first high school player in Canada? She was the first Canadian woman, they believe, to have dunked in a game. Wow. Tisha Ami here out of Ontario. Plays with the Canadian national team, has a chance to play on the Olympic team. And South Carolina is going to call timeout. Leticia Emma here. She came to South Carolina last semester. So she has broken into this South Carolina system and scheme. She knows how to get it done. Carolina leading here in the second quarter, 35 to 21 over number 13, Kentucky. <laughs> 14 point lead for the South Carolina Gamecocks here in the second quarter. And we were talking about Leticia Mihir out of Canada. This is the dunk that they believe is the first Canadian woman to dunk in a game in history. I love it, I love it, I How love it. How cool is that? Awesome. Man, she is a part of this top-ranked recruiting class for South Carolina. You've already seen what they can do. We've called multiple names. I mean, Boston, Cook, Amihir, Beal. They're all contributing. It's not just they're coming in as highly recruited freshmen. They're, they're living up to the hype. Oh, the hype is for real. When you look at rank number 3, 4, 10, and 11, they don't just come in with the numbers. They're demonstrating they are as good as advertised. It's been interesting to watch, too, because we've seen top recruiting classes go into programs, and maybe they don't have a great season. But I think, personally, one of the keys, I think, is that they're so willing to learn. They want to get better, and they want to listen to the older leadership on the team. And they serve each other. It's a lot of times when you come in, you're the best player, and you get all the, you know, the Gatorade player of the year out of your whole state. You think, okay, i got to come here and shine. These kids don't want to shine. They want to win and they're demonstrating with their play on the court. Yeah, that mindset is so important. And it's paid off for Carolina this season. Three wins over ranked opponents. Beautiful ball movement. You know, a lot of times when teams sub, you say, well, they're gonna take a, a step back or they're going to slough off a little bit. South Carolina gets just gets stronger when she, when Don Staley goes to her big. It's going to be a foul on Tatiana Wyatt. 
That's her second. Okay, check out points in the paint, Carolyn. 30 points in the paint for South Carolina. All but seven of their points have been in the paint. And it's not just because they're going inside to Boston. You know, you got guards cutting back door. They're willing to make the extra pass when the defense rotates over. So they're getting it done the easy way, close, close to the rim. Points in the paint have been so crucial to South Carolina. 52% of their points have come in the paint. And hey, it's not just the bigs. The guards are accounting for 46% of those paint points. Well, so far tonight, the guards have 14 of the 37 points. This is Kiki Herbert Harrigan at the line for Carolina, gets the first. Kiki McKinney picked up her second foul for Kentucky. So McKinney and Tatiana Wyatt both with two fouls. That's tough for Kentucky, who has a limited, limited front court as it is. Patterson trying to get something going. A little bit of room, dumps it off to McKinney. Steps back for three. Zaya Cook taking it, and she's got numbers. <laughs> Just pad the stat sheet. The baby's on the boards now. <laughs> Freshman that can rebound and play defense, a coach's dream? Absolutely. You don't ever want to wake up from that. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Howard has had to shoulder most of the load in this game. 13 of Kentucky's 21 points have come from the sophomore. And again, more paint points. It's just too easy for Carolina right now. Desi Henderson dropping dimes, y'all. Eight zero run for the Gamecocks. Desi Henderson just anticipating where the rotation of the defense McKinney comes up, and Bill, again, Bill's movement without the ball to position herself to get the easy score. Instead of waiting until the ball came where she was, she moved herself into a position where it was going to be advantageous for her to score. Free Beal out of Rock Island, Illinois. Dawn Staley told us one of her favorite things about her, her offense doesn't affect her defense. Well, and Ty Harris, a senior, after the Duke game, we talked to Ty and, we, and talked about the South Carolina team being a potential contender. And I asked Ty, why do you say that? And she pointed to Bree Bill. And she said, because of the defense that Bree Bill, a freshman, plays, because a lot of times she gets the assignment of the best perimeter player of their opponents, and she has that much confidence in her defense. You saw that in the Duke game when they put her on Gorecki. Oh, man, she gave her fits. 11 turnovers for the Cats right now. Eight of those came in the first quarter. They're getting a little dose of their own medicine. Now, Kentucky came in having forced 20 or more turnovers in 10 of their 12 games. There's one for Chastity Patterson. All up to her, putting on a show. Eight points in her second game with Kentucky this season. Quick pass inside to Boston. Destiny Henderson sent a laser in there. Get the ball back to Patterson. She got that ball in a string like a yo-yo. She can make things happen for the Wildcats. Blair Green just inside the arc for two. Her first points. Bree Beal. Man, just driving in on Blair Green like it's no big deal. Well, she's just got that strength. You look at her build. She didn't, she didn't come in here frail. She came in with a college body. Hey. 
Shot rattles out from Green. It'll be Gamecock basketball. In comes Lily Grissett. What a tag team you have. Bill goes out. Grissett comes in. You're still getting that same kind of pressure with the same kind of length on the, on the perimeter defensively. You see the big girl? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I love it. A little drop <laughs> pass. That's a second on Ryan Howard, too. Nice lead pass to Grissette. The timing was perfect. Look at Lily. She was going to lend a helping hand. Help our <laughs> camera guy get up. Grissette sinks the first. South Carolina averages 81 points a game. They're already at 46 against what was thought to be one of the better defensive teams in the SEC. Yeah, top 15 team according to the rankings. This Kentucky team hadn't trailed by more than six points. That was at Louisville coming into this game. Pascal's shot is short. Oh, Kentucky's defense is just allowing 48 points per game. And yeah, that's gone, 49 already. This South Carolina team is for real. Yeah. Remember, this is only the third power five team that Kentucky's played all season. South Carolina, on the other hand, has played seven, I think we counted. About a seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Herbert Harrigan on the wing. Kentucky ball. It's like addition by subtraction, the South Carolina team is a completely different team than last year. So, had a couple of players transfer, and then you add in this number one recruiting class. The chemistry is great. The talent is good, and they play defense. <laughs> Ty Harris throws up one at the buzzer, but what a first half for South Carolina. Kentucky only giving up 48.7 points per game. They've already given up 49 in the first half. South Carolina leading this one big, 49 to 28. What a start to SEC play for number four, South Carolina. They are up on ranked Kentucky 49 to 28 at the half. What an impressive performance for the Gamecocks. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck back with you. And man, I think somebody forgot to tell the freshmen that they're supposed to be intimidated by their first SEC game because they don't care about that. Absolutely <laughs> not. They came in locked and loaded and ready to go from start of the season and carried it over now that the SEC season has started. I mean, they are so impressive in the opening 20 minutes of this game, combining for 32 points for South Carolina. And they spread the wealth. It isn't just one freshman. You had Bill going to Cook. You've got Emma here atta attacking the basket. Henderson finds another freshman down low. They're everywhere, almost like ants or roaches in the kitchen when the lights come on. <laughs> you got freshmen everywhere that can do a little bit of everything. And John Staley is confident to go to them at any time. And they're confident in each other. It really showed in the opening half of this game. Carolina freshman, 32 points, six assists, and five steals. 
But how about the presence in the paint from South Carolina? 38 of their 49 points came in the paint. That's what Dawn Staley wants from her offense. She feels like she knows her team can shoot the ball, but if you establish and stay aggressive, attacking the defense and make the defense shrink to the paint, it'll make those perimeter shots. When you need them, you get a little more time. You can shoot on your own time. They're doing this against a Kentucky team who was only giving up about 49 points per game. Well, they gave that up in the first half. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about it is that Kentucky doesn't have, they don't really have that true post presence. The size advantage has to go to South Carolina. When you look at the size of Aaliyah Boston inside, or Kiki Herbert Harrigan, or even the perimeter of the guards, Bree Bill, it's a big guard that can go inside. Tatiana Wyatt, who is one of the inside presences for Kentucky, is now on the bench with three fouls. And I think that Kentucky was hoping that they would have Nene Cole available. At least she would have five fouls to give. She's got some size to be inside. Cole's been in concussion protocol for Kentucky. to Sabrina Haynes. Zai Cook taking Jada Roper to the house. Nine points for the freshman Cook. You know, we, want, we asked the question about how South Carolina was going to slow down Ryan Howard, number 10 in the black jersey. She's their leading scorer, averaging 20 points per game. She's got the majority of their points at 13 tonight, but she has had to work really hard to get that. And it's been, you, they kept fresh bodies on her. First it was Bree Bill, Lily Grissett. Just this last possession, Kiki Herbert Harrigan was on her. I like Cook, man. Smooth. When she signed to come to South Carolina and just started following her on social media, she caught the attention of Chance the Rapper. He was tweeting about wow. it. Wow. It's like, let me check her out. I had to go find her highlights on YouTube. It's a pretty impressive highlight reel. Yeah, I asked Don Staley today at Shoot Around, you know, the first time you saw her, what did you think? And she said, dynamic. Yeah. And, and she plays defense. Oh, absolutely. Boston showing a little range. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because Bill was trying to go to work, posting up down low. It was like a reversal of roles. Boston said, you go to work down low. you got her occupied. Let me take this jumper. Oh, they get Kiki Herbert Harrigan way late for the foul. Don Staley was up off the bench real quick when that whistle blew. She's taking deep breaths right now. <laughs> That's two on Makia Herbert Harrigan and puts Howard at the line. First one rattles out. Ryan Howard, the reigning national freshman of the year. She's second in the SEC behind Kennedy Carter in points per game. Tyna Napier had to go over and tell Kiki Herbert Harrigan, let it go. There's a little, little gum yapping going on. I think 
Zaya Cook has decided this is her time to uh, ball out, if you will. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Second foul on Haynes. I mean, if you're Kentucky, you're facing a South Carolina team who's already shown you how many different weapons they have. Where do you even start when Matthew Mitchell is talking to his team at halftime? Well, when you look at the stat sheet and you look at that in the first half you gave up 38 points in the paint, you might go zone and see if just build a wall and make South Carolina prove that they can beat you from the perimeter. Change up a little bit of something. You keep the ball on the perimeter. What did you think about Chastity Patterson running the offense in the first half for Kentucky? I like Patterson running the offense because she's that threat with the ability. She can shoot the three, but she'll also attack the basket and make the defense collapse. Matthew Mitchell has said that he'd like to use Patterson and Jada Roper to kind of play point guard by committee. So this is just pa Chastity Patterson's second game back. Second game with Kentucky, excuse me. She joined the program in the spring semester last season after transferring from Texas, so had to sit out until December. Ryan Howard with a nice take. Matthew Mitchell trying to make the case, calling the foul. Give a little relief to his All-American. Cook's a little short. Boston hustles for it. They swing it to tie. And look at Bree Beal go to work. Jesse Henderson likes it. But she anticipated Beal, anticipated the shot, and got that rebound in position before even the shot left Ty Harris's hand. Bills a leading scorer in the first half with 11 points for South Carolina. To watch when Harris gets ready to take the shot, Bill down in the bottom of your screen got position on Jada Roper in order to position herself for that rebound. Just adding to that paint point total, by the way. They're at 42 now. Well, those are the easiest baskets you can get. You know, if that shot doesn't fall, you're right there. You position yourself. Just the easy put back. Take I like away. this kid. Yeah. I like Patterson. Step back three. Boom! I like her. And like you said, she just came back. Roper draws the, draws the offensive foul. But once Patterson and Howard get a rhythm together, they will complement each other. Look at that step back. That's behind the men's three-point line. Chastity Patterson has 13 points. That ties her career high. Ty Harris, by the way, just picked up her second foul. And there she goes with the shot. Carolina still leading the way, 61 to 42 here in Columbia. Carolina, Mississippi State, Texas A&M. And you know, I thought Kentucky till we see what's happening tonight. You also have to have the Lady Vols in the conversation. And with Tennessee with their length, the new head coach with Kelly Harper, will this team now get back to where t Tennessee has traditionally been at the top of the SEC? Kentucky will play Tennessee on Sunday, so a tough opening stretch for the Wildcats. And then, of course, player of the year, you're always looking. Kennedy Carter makes a lot of noise. Ryan Howard is getting some looks, too. Well, she's having to carry the mail for this whole Kentucky team. But I, and I think it makes it hard when you look at a team like South Carolina and they're so well balanced, it's going to divide a lot of votes. Yeah. But there's a lot of talented players that also could be in that conversation. Ryan Howard has 17 points. She averages almost 21 points per game. That's second in the SEC behind Kennedy Carter of Texas A&M, who we will see later tonight.
Absolutely, and they're going to be playing Arkansas. Chelsea Dungey would be another player that could be a candidate for SEC player, SEC player of the year. Yeah, Mike Neighbors has brought on some explosive guards, a trio of transfers to help his program. My game tipping off around 9 Eastern tonight here on the SEC Network. We'll get back to the hotel just in time. Yep, check it out. Yeah. Herbert Harrigan. I love the execution. I love the ball movement. I love the timing of that offense. So you just look at the size, the length of South Carolina. It's going to be the third on Herbert Harrigan. I feel like we're seeing more and more teams that have that size at every position. It's not just down low. Well, you look nationally, Oregon State is huge. Yes. You know, then you have the length of Tennessee. This is the tallest Lady Vol team in Tennessee history. You look at the length of South Carolina and what they have. And a lot of times when you talk about size, you think it's just inside on the block. Now it's, it can be in all five positions. For Kentucky, that means that they're going to have to figure out how to play against size because they're playing in the SEC and they don't have the size on the perimeter. And right. they don't have, like, a huge true post presence. And when you don't have the size, but you've got the scoring ability, your execution, your screening has got to be sharp, your discipline offensively of the right people taking the right shots in positions where they can score. Victoria Saxton driving in. She'll go to the line. Chastity Patterson picked up her first. Saxon is one of the captains on this South Carolina team. She's just a sophomore. Her and Ty Harris were both voted captains, and Victoria Saxon was a unanimous vote to be a captain on this team. That's impressive for a sophomore. And it says a lot about her because Ty Harris was going with USA Basketball over the summer, and Don Staley talks about Victoria Saxon of the, as the mother of the team. And she was the leader while she was gone. When Ty came back and they finished their workout, and the team came together, they were getting ready to break it down, you know, one, two, three team or whatever. And Victoria said, you know, Ty, you break it down. And Ty's like, no, you've been here, you do it. Victoria said, no, you're the senior, you break it down. And Don pointed out, to be a great leader, you gotta be able to be a great follower. And that's what Victoria Saxon demonstrated in the respect to the senior of when she comes back, no, you're the head dog. But that then gains the respect of the rest of the team. That kind of gives you a glimpse of the chemistry of Absolutely. this team. I mean, yeah. they get along so well. We see it in their play, but to hear stories like that off the court sure. just emphasizes it more. Yeah. And South Carolina already has a very good resume coming into the SEC portion of their schedule. They're three and one against teams in the top 25. One of those wins was against number two Baylor. Well, and I asked Don, how did this non-conference prepare them for conference? And she said they've seen just about every style of play. Just probably not as consistent a physical play that they're going to see in the SEC. But, you know, you see uh, Maryland, they had an inside post game, a strong point guard. You had Indiana, a very disciplined team that could score from the perimeter. The same was with South Dakota. South Dakota had all five players could step on the perimeter. So you're having to defend in a lot of different ways. So that helps to prepare you for the SEC. Yeah, all of that and 
their only loss, not just in the top 25, of the season was to that Indiana team. Yeah, and not to take anything away from Indiana, but Aaliyah Boston had lost a teacher that was close to her. She had, uh, you know, having to deal emotionally with that and then got into some foul trouble. And I think officials getting used to how to officiate a player with the size of Boston. Me here taking it up in the double team. Tatiana Wyatt just picked up her fourth foul. So Wyatt will take a seat. You know, each time I watch Emma here play, she gets better. And I think she is getting more and more comfortable with that knee. And she had a season ending injury when she was in high school and came to South Carolina last the, uh, in the spring semester to do her rehab. And now, you know, starting out, she was a little timid. But in watching her in that last rebounding series, she's getting that spring back yeah. in her legs. Well, not only did she have a season, season ending injury her senior year, she also had one her junior year of high school. Right. So you're dealing with a couple of those, and then it's also the mental aspect of, sure. am I going to get hurt again? Yeah. I mean, looking at the SEC, who can challenge the South Carolina team right now? Well, I'm inter real interested to see the Tennessee matchup because of the length. Yeah. I also, Vic Schaefer, Mississippi State, always has his team prepared defensively. And then Texas A&M, okay, you defended a Ryan Howard. How do you defend a Kennedy Carter? That's the third on Kiki McKinney. Saxton back at the line for South Carolina. Well, Friday Night Heights kicks off another gymnastics season next Friday with a triple header on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Missouri and Kentucky flip first at 6 p.m. Then we vault over to Athens for LSU taking on the Gym Dogs. And finally, we have the Iron Bowl of gymnastics between Alabama and Auburn Friday Night Heights kicking off next Friday. It'll be interesting for this Kentucky gymnastics team. They're losing a senior class from last year that brought Kentucky to its only winning seasons ever in program history. So Tim Garrison is trying to reload that Kentucky Wildcats gymnastics team. When I coached at Florida, that was my first experience in going to a college gymnastics. It's wild. I had to cover my eyes like I was scared for some of the tricks and <laughs> things that the players were doing. Yep. It was like it's being impressive. in a circus. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. But they were really, really good. Yeah, Florida's one of the top uh, teams in the SEC, Florida LSU. Dan Mullen actually really likes gymnastics. I've seen him at several Florida gymnastics meets. Yeah. Quick pass inside to Saxon, and she's fouled by Jada Roper. Her second. Ah. Ryan Howard is back in, replacing Kiki McKinney. Now Matthew Mitchell has four guards on the floor and Ryan Howard. So I got to believe he's got to try to bring, if he can score the basketball, bring some full court pressure, maybe some run and jump action to try to break the rhythm of South Carolina. 
Remember, Kentucky's two bigger presents in the paint, Tatiana Wyatt and Kiki McKinney, are in foul trouble. They'll make a switch. Haynes will go out. Blair Green back in. You know, Blair Green had to play some four last year. So <laughs> she's back to familiar territory in the situation they're in right now. You know, last year, these two teams, each team won on the other's home court. Kentucky came here and won, and South Carolina went there. Now that Kentucky win ended a nine-game losing streak to the Gamecocks. Ooh. Howard steps into the three. Nice pass. Right on the hand of Ami here. That's a nice pass by Henderson and not putting a loop in it where the defense could recover, but a line drive straight inside to LA down low. Second foul on Amanda Pascal. Got her own rebound, gives it back to Henderson. And a foul on Blair Green. I think we've had more fouls in the third quarter than we did in the first half. Lily <laughs> Brissett's yeah. turn at the line. When these are rebounding fouls, are boxing out because South Carolina just has such a size advantage that, that Kentucky's just got to hold, grab, push back all they can to try to keep the Gamecocks off the glass. Kentucky hasn't had a field goal in over four minutes and 30 seconds. Foul on Victoria Saxton for South Carolina, her second. Howard's hit her average. She's at 20 points tonight. And watching how she's matured from her freshman year to this year. It was like she just wanted to fit in kind of last year and excelled. Now she belongs. And you watch her play, and she plays with more emotion. Time winding down. Destiny Henderson on the move. That's the third on Howard. There ain't no quit in this Kentucky team. They're not going to let anything come easy from South Carolina. It's a, if I looked at this South Carolina team, there's one area I got a question mark in is their free throw shooting. Shooting 66%. Big games, that could be crucial. Roper chucks it down the court. South Carolina has a chance to get another shot, and they do! That was awesome. Kentucky wanted to throw full court, but there was the interception by South Carolina. 
and understanding that there was enough time on the clock to make that extra pass. Heading to the fourth quarter, we're going coaches New Year's resolutions on the other side. Basketball in 2020 is to out hustle every opponent. Gamecock women's basketball New Year's resolution is to be true to who they are. True to who they are, meaning if if you're about working hard, then work hard. If you're about being a great friend, be a great friend. If you're about being a great teammate, hey, be the best teammate that you can be. And obviously we want to put winning in there, but if all those things are there, winning will take care of itself. South Carolina leads it as we start the fourth quarter here in Columbia. Who do you think South Carolina is? Truly, as we heard Don Staley say, true to who they are. Who are they right now? I think they're a team that are, that's on a mission. I think that their first mission is to win an SEC title. But in watching how they practiced and prepared, I think they're a team. South Carolina calls timeout. South Carolina with a quick timeout just as we started the fourth quarter. They lead at 79 to 52 over the number 13 team in the nation, the Kentucky Wildcats. And John Staley's got to be pretty happy with this group that she's assembled. Majority freshmen, but they were the number one recruiting class in the nation. Well, they've lived up to the hype. And they've also gotten tremendous leadership from Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan, but also their bench, the depth that South Carolina has. 20th season for Dawn Staley as a head coach. And of course, she took South Carolina to that 2017 national championship. That's where those seniors, Kiki Herbert Harrigan and Ty Harris, they were freshmen when they went and won that national championship. And they remember that feeling. They want to pass that on to these freshmen if they can. When you look at what Dawn Staley has done here at South Carolina, because I can remember coming here as a player and as a coach, and there was nobody here. And you look at the leading the nation in attendance. Now she's hung a banner and won a championship. They're signing top recruiting classes and they keep coming in. It's just remarkable. It tells you what kind of person, what kind of coach Don Staley is. She, not, she doesn't just get the talent too. She can develop that talent and That's take the their thing. game to the next level. Absolutely. A lot of, play, a lot of coaches, they want to get talent in and just coach the talent. She sees the potential in how players can be better and even prepares them to be successful in college and then to go on to the next level. When you look at, you've got Asia Wilson playing for the Aces in the WNBA and Tiffany Mitchell still playing in the league. Twenty or more wins each of the last eight seasons. They have been in the AP Top 25 for a while and made it to the Elite Eight in three of the last four seasons. And you know, just looking at the makeup of this team, that Dawn Staley's got to appreciate what she has at the point guard position with Destiny Henderson. She's got a career high six assists. And then you have Ty Harris, the veteran. And you've got Zy Cook that just came in right away and has no fear. And I think she's going to be a leader because she's got that presence about her to be vocal along with Destiny Henderson. You know, one of the things you talked about earlier that we don't talk enough about is Joette Law. Talent follows her. Yeah. She brought in the number one recruiting class when she was an assistant at Tennessee. And then when she came here to South Carolina, Dawn was no fool. When Nikki McCray got the head job to go to Old Dominion, she said, I got to go out and get the top recruiter in the country. And she went and got Jolette Law. What a nice addition to the staff. 
But Joanne is from South Carolina. Her mama lives just right down the road. Lena Law lives in Florence, South Carolina. You look at Jolette, she played for Vivian Stringer in Iowa. She was a globetrotter too. Seven assists, three steals for Destiny Henderson. I mean, looking at this matchup, I really thought this was going to be a closer contest. I'm kind of surprised too. at how it's turned out. Because the defense of South Carolina never allowed Kentucky to get into what they wanted to do offensively. You know, their first pass, there were deflection steals. Even South Carolina brought full court pressure, pressure which is something you would expect from Kentucky. set on the foul, her third. Yeah, South Carolina forced eight turnovers by Kentucky in the first quarter. And you could tell it was a, they were a little rattled. They were just having to give the ball to Ryan Howard to try to figure out something to do. Well, and that's what you're supposed to do. When you're at home, you don't want your opponents to come in and get comfortable. And if you can establish yourself off the bat, Put that foot on the accelerator and keep it there. Never let them get a belief or confidence. Let's go help your cause. For Kentucky, Chastity Patterson is the one that's at the line, and I think she's been a, a nice addition tonight. I mean, she's proven how she can help this Kentucky team in just her second game playing for the Wildcats. I think that... You talked about it earlier, when a player joins in starting in January, there's, there's going to be a period, a growth period of figuring out how that fits, but I think she's a terrific addition to Kentucky. Already has a career high in points tonight, 15 for Chastity Patterson, as she's been subbed out for Kentucky. Kenny drops in. Seven points for her. And that's the fourth foul on Kiki McKinney. So her and Tatiana Wyatt are out there with four fouls for Kentucky. Oh, Ty Harris got robbed. And that's the fifth on Tatiana Wyatt, so her night is over. No points for Tatiana Wyatt tonight. A couple of rebounds and an assist. Kentucky goes back to Lexington and on Sunday face the Lady Vols. It's another team. Kelly Harper has really put an emphasis on her team and their defense. And they have length on the perimeter. And they've got size inside. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Kentucky makes in order to try to get more offense, produ offensive production. Tennessee already picked up a win tonight in their SEC opener against Missouri. Missouri actually led that game early on. Kelly Harper picking up her first SEC win of her career as a coach. Jordan Horston had a big night for Tennessee. And Renaya Davis. That's quite a one-two punch. And then Tamara Key 
really, really went inside to hers because they had the size advantage against Missouri. So you would expect them to exploit that on Sunday against Kentucky. You would think so. I think that they learned, you know, when they didn't take advantage of that, when they got the, they could cook going. She's quite a player. When Tennessee played Texas and they got the Texas players into some foul trouble, Tennessee didn't go inside. But I think they've adjusted that understanding. That is their advantage. How can Kentucky even adapt when they don't have that size down low? Double fouls. Double technicals. Matthew Mitchell not happy at all about it. I didn't see specifically what happened. I think Amanda Pascal and Zaya Cook exchanging words, maybe? They were having a less than friendly conversation. Technicals offset. And now I think Don Staley is pointing out the shot clock to. And they just reset it. And they're going to change the inbound position. Ty Harris lost it. And that still would have made Kentucky, if they could have scored it, feel a little bit better. Give it to Aaliyah Boston. She doesn't mind feeding her teammates. Bree Beal cut into the basket. Second chance, third chance, yep. That's padding stats, getting those offensive rebounds on your own shot. <laughs> stat sheet's going to look real good. That's just the physicality that Don Staley talked to us about Bree Beal. Well, Aaliyah Boston is definitely one of the freshman of the year candidates. Who else is on that list? We'll tell you on the other side. play well how about Aaliyah Boston she's definitely putting up numbers this season that have her in the running for SEC freshman of the year and freshman of the year in the country well she's putting up big numbers got a big presence inside but she's not the only freshman in the SEC that's making some noise when you look at you've got Rakia Jackson at Mississippi State uh, you've got Briggs at Florida Coy Love at Vanderbilt has really come along and stepped up big time and then Haley Frank at Missouri, and who's not on the list? Jordan Horston, who hadn't put up big offensive average, offensive numbers for Tennessee, but she showed up big today against Missouri. Yeah, 13 points for Jordan Horston tonight, and I mean, all of those freshmen are ab averaging double figure points in their very first season in college basketball. I'm gonna be interested to see, though, how those numbers change now that we're in conference play. And I think that Jordan Horston will be one of those freshmen whose numbers go up because she's going to have to do more if Tennessee is going to be in the top of the conference. Kentucky will get a look at Jordan Horston and Tennessee on Sunday in Lexington. We'll be on the call for that game. 
I hope. My voice. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. No talking and after this game is over for two days. <laughs> well, tonight, after women's basketball whip around, the SEC Now team recaps all the games with highlights, analysis, and interviews. It's at 11 p.m. Eastern. It just means more, and it's also on the ESPN app. Great way to kick off the start of the SEC season. We've got all the teams in action taking you around. If there's a certain game you want to see, of course, you can see it in full on the ESPN app. There's another game tonight featuring two top 25 teams coming up at the top of the hour. Texas A&M and Arkansas both ranked. They'll be playing each other on SEC Network. So we've got Chelsea Dungy, Kennedy Carter. Kennedy Carter leads the SEC in points per game. Chelsea Dungy is third. I tell you, that's going to be a game. Won't discount and say there won't be any defense played. <laughs> <laughs> but that will not be the right. priority. High scoring it's game? High scoring, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I know Bob Starkey when he hears that's going to be like, you know Carolyn Texas A&M plays defense. I know you do. But that's not going to be the yeah. priority tonight. Arkansas loves to push the ball. I mean, watching them is like zoom, zoom across the screen. Mike Neighbors told me his players know you're racing the person that you're matched up against every time down the court. And if they beat you down the court, court twice, you're coming out. Wow. Everybody's going crazy inside Colonial Life Arena because if Jada Roper misses this free throw, they all get free Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, the disappointment. All for a chicken sandwich. Yep. I think Popeye's chicken sandwich is bad. Just saying. I haven't tried it. Beal has to fight for it and gets fouled on the way down by Ryan Howard. That's her fourth. Bill's going to be a fun player to watch. Yeah, she's a tremendous, she's a tremendous shooter, three-point shooter. It hasn't really been very fluid for her so far in her freshman season, but she can shoot the ball, and to couple that along with her defense, dangerous, dangerous. And she's already shown the versatility. She can take you inside and post you up. She's not afraid to crash the board to mix it up in the paint. Ami here, this might be the most comfortable we've seen her. Absolutely, I agree. 12 points now for Ami here, number 15 in white. Kentucky came into this game only giving up 48 points per game, and South Carolina is close to hitting 100. Ryan Howard just took the ball away. She'll take the contact. I'm telling you, each game I watch her play, she gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And 
stronger and stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Denied. That's a full defense for the full 30 seconds, and then you end it with an exclamation point. I'm here. That's one of those five freshmen in that number one recruiting class. I mean, the defensive intensity has not let up from no, South Carolina. Absolutely. It's not like they just got off to a good hustle in the first quarter, and then they didn't let Kentucky come back in this at all. Minutes ago, South Carolina grow it, inching closer to its fourth win over a ranked opponent. This is the fifth time this season they faced a ranked team, and those first four meetings really help prepare them for this SE, start to SEC play. So Sunday they got to travel to Alabama, and then they'll be home the following Thursday against Arkansas. That should be interesting. That will be interesting. Arkansas, another ranked team. They're coming in at 20. These folks get real excited about a chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Best thing you've seen from South Carolina tonight? Their defense. I like the defensive intensity. You know, getting a lot of deflections, a lot of pressure, attention to the scout. I think that they did a terrific job of following the scout of Lisa Boyer in their preparation. Brian Howard crushes a three, and South Carolina can hold it. What a performance for the Gamecocks. No fear in this number one freshman class coming into SEC play. South Carolina now 13 and one, and they start off SEC play with a win. It was with a big bang, and I think it was a great exposure of the freshmen and how ready they are to enter into this SEC conference play. For Kentucky, they've got some questions to answer. This was a Kentucky team that came in ranked top 15 in the nation, and they struggled with the pressure of South Carolina. They're going to have to figure out with their lack of size how they're going to compete on the glass with the size of the other teams in the SEC. And they're also going to have to have contributions from somebody else besides Ryan Howard. And I think Chassie Patterson going to be a great addition and make a difference for Kentucky. Big win for South Carolina. They dominated from the opening tip, making a statement to the start of SEC play. The Gamecocks get a win on their home floor, their fourth win this season over a ranked opponent, and they do it in fashion 99-72 to over the Kentucky Wildcats. Free Beal with a career-high 15 points tonight in your first SEC game of your career. And this is after a long break, holiday break, too. How did you get ready to start a new season in conference play? I think the biggest thing was when you're back home, like, yeah, you're seeing your family, friends and stuff, but you definitely, whether it's just shots or just dribbling, you have to get a ball in your hand. So I think that was the biggest factor for all of us, just being able to get into the gym, work out a little bit, and not just come home off the, you know, the Christmas food and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much does it, how good does it make you feel that Don Staley has the confidence in putting you, you get the assignment yeah. of your opponent's best players night yeah. in and night out. I think that just shows like it's the little things that counts. It's not just 
me being able to score on offense. Defense is like the biggest factor in the game, and to be able to have that in my hands, it, it means a lot. Was there some? I mean, we see so many freshmen who come in, and they're used to being the best player on yeah. their team. They're used to getting all the offensive points, but mm -hmm. you don't let your offense affect your defense. Was there somebody along the way that that pushed defense on you, that helped you have that mindset? I think it was more so myself coming in. Like the first couple practices, I realized like, okay, there's a lot of like all-star players on this team. So I definitely, like I said, the little things, you got to find something else. We're all going to score. We're all going to get those, those easy baskets. So you definitely got to find something else. And I feel like defense was the thing I found. You were the number one recruiting class coming to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. and did you expect to have experience, number one, being in the starting lineup, there are three of you, yeah. and then having the success that you've had so far. I think definitely coming into this, I didn't expect starting lineup. I expected to work for it or, you know, come off the bench and, you know, give the hardest minutes that I could possibly give. But to be able to have that starting spot and have three freshmen start at that, that that's kind of crazy. You all are working very hard for it. Congratulations <laughs> on you. the win and a career night for you. Thank you.